This is Suzanne Wagner of the C.G. Jung Institute of Los Angeles. In the next hour, you will view a conversation I had with Wolf Baumann of Basel, Switzerland. Mr. Baumann is a grandson of C.G. Jung. He was born in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, to Fritz and Gret Baumann in 1932. His mother is the daughter of Emma and C.G. Jung. During several years of his childhood, Wolf lived in Paris with his family where his father worked. When war broke out in 1939, Gret Baumann took her children back to Switzerland and for over two years they lived in the house at Kusnacht with their grandparents, Emma and C.G. Jung. This gave the grandchildren more contact with their grandparents than they ordinarily would have had. I was pleased to be able to meet with Wolf and to gather some of his impressions of his grandfather and grandmother and to learn something of the impact Jung's work has had on him personally. The conversation was filmed in September of 1979 in Basel where Wolf has a family of his own and works as a partner in a private banking firm. Dr. Wolf Baumann, good morning. Good morning. It's very good of you to have us here in your office in Basel. Uh, I would like to um, hear something about your, your background, and uh, then we can uh, go into a discussion about your experiences with your grandfather, C.G. Jung. Can you tell me something about yourself, where you were born, and how you came here to Basel? And mm -hmm. Well, uh, I am the third uh, boy of, of my mother, uh, who was a daughter of uh, Jung. I was born in Schaffhausen in '32, uh, but I had my childhood in Paris, where my, my father had a job with, uh, with a machinery plant. In '39, when the war broke out, uh, my father stayed in France, where my mother and my brothers uh, got uh, to Küsnacht, Zürich, where we lived for three years with uh, Jung in his house. In '42, my father came to Switzerland, and then we moved away from Jung and lived with uh, our father. I made my schools in Kuznacht and in Zurich and had a law training with the Zurich Universi University. Uh, afterwards I went into the banking business and I'm now here in Basel as a private banker since 1962. Mm -hmm. so, so you've uh, returned to the city where Jung, your grandfather, was a boy. He went to school here in Basel, didn't yes. he, as a boy? Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he was native of Basel and uh, mm -hmm. I think he left Basel uh, through his whole life. Mm -hmm. He also always spoke uh, Basel dialect. Oh, he did? Uh, yes, during his whole life, yeah. Never adopted the Zurich? No, no. No, never did. Well, can, so the, those three years uh, must have been very interesting part of your boyhood uh, to have a close contact with your grandfather. Can you recall, uh, you must have many memories from, of that time. Yes, uh, naturally I, I was seven to ten years old at uh, that time uh, and that's just a question of age. I, I wasn't interested in psych psychology <laughs> at, at that time. Uh, my grandfather was very occupied 
with his work at that time. So that uh, there was always a certain distance uh, between uh, us. I, I liked him very much, but I also feared him a bit. And uh, I was also a bit afraid of the patients uh, who came to, to visit mm -hmm. him. Uh, they, they all were a bit funny for me, but they were also a bit... Uh, uh, just something to fear was about uh, or around them. Mm -hmm. In his uh, free time, uh, naturally we did this and that together, uh, he learned me sailing, ah. yes, uh, with his, with the smaller one of his two boats, mm -hmm. the boat which, which still exists, exists today. It was a little two-master. Uh, from the Kusnacht house, which is... From the Kusnacht house, yes. Right on the water. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember also uh, being taken with him to Bollingen, uh, but I don't remember much details about uh, these times. Uh -huh. uh. Did you have your meals together with your grandfather? Yes, as far I, uh -huh. as I remember, we had all, uh, at least at noon and in the evening, we had meals together. Uh -huh. uh, only when he had guests, it might happen that we children had to eat in the kitchen before. <laughs> uh, did you yeah. sense, as a boy of, of uh, seven to ten, that he was a, an important man, that he was a um, uh, great man? Was there any sense of that? Yes, there was a bit. Uh, not, not very much... Uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, I, I sensed it, but I didn't know that he was a very, very great man. Mm -hmm. I just know, knew that he had a certain importance because everybody in the family said that. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you think, looking back now, that there, were, uh, there was anything unique or special about the, the atmosphere of, uh, of the family life? I mean, he was a pioneering depth psychologist. Mm -hmm. And, of course, his work with dreams and with the inner life is the central uh, aspect of, of mm -hmm. his work. And I wondered if it was just, um, what about dreams? Uh, if you had a nightmare or you had a particularly good dream, did you talk mm -hmm. about it or was it? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I don't think that I talked uh, about my dreams with him at uh -huh. that time. Uh -huh. uh, I probably had my my mother for talking with her for uh -huh. about these things. And there was always a certain distance because uh, he was just so much occupied that he didn't have too much time for us. Yes. Normally we saw him at meals and that was all. Uh -huh. At that time. It was only later on when I grew older that I had more personal and, and much more interesting contacts with him. Mm -hmm. When did that happen? How old were you when that began to take place? Uh, well, I think that began about when I was 18 to perhaps even more, 20 years old. Because that was the age when I became very much interested in psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 19, I finished my I don't know how you call it, my high school, I think, mm -hmm. or college training, before university. And at that time, I was not sure uh, what uh, my university training will be. I, I was uh, thinking about psychology also at that time. I'm very happy not to have done it. <laughs> uh, uh, but I was influenced by him at that time very much. And that was also the time where I could discuss with him about my dreams sometimes and also other problems. And did this help you decide upon a vocation? Uh, no. 
No, the dream no, work. I, I, I don't think so, no. Uh -huh. no. Mm -hmm. You say uh -huh. now that you're happy you didn't go in the direction of psychology. You must feel very, then, happy and rooted in this kind of work you do. Is that what you mean? Well, uh, I still think that I could have done uh, very different works. I'm not specialized in anything. I, I think uh, now I know uh, very little about very many things. <laughs> <laughs> but there is no field in which uh, I, I have really profound uh, knowledge. So I could have become an engineer or a doctor or a psychologist or, uh -huh. or a lawyer or, or a, a banker. Uh -huh. as I am. Uh, but I am happy not to have become a psychologist uh, because uh, the psychology just uh, are sometimes a bit away from, uh, well, I, I would say from life. And, and it might be insane also for the psychologist himself only to uh, to work on the uh, on the soul of himself and of other people. It is good to people to do something else, uh -huh. to mm -hmm. something more practical, perhaps. Mm -hmm. They have they get their feet off the ground, up into yes. the air. Yes, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What do you feel about your grandfather? Did he have his feet on the ground? Well. Uh, certainly it was a great problem for him and I think from time to time he got a bit away but he was very aware of this problem and uh, he had also his times where he really tried to stay on his ground. Mm -hmm. I think that's a reason why he did hand work, he, he worked in his garden and so uh, just to, to, uh, to stay a normal person. Mm -hmm. I think he, he managed quite well to, to uh, get on the ground again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did seem then to do a lot of that, to garden, to work in stone, yes, and in bowling and to, to live very close to the earth, a yes, simple yeah. kind of concrete life. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He thought that this uh, is very important for men and, and that one of the illnesses of modern men is that we are too far away from, from the earth. Did you enjoy sailing with him? Uh, very, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the contact with uh, nature and so on was very nice for me, but uh, much more the contact with him personally. On the sailboat, you, you had him for yourself. You could talk to him, and he was always very interesting. Even when I was a seven-year-old boy, he was very interesting to talk with uh, for me. Mm. Uh, he told me tales and uh, talked about nature and so on with me on the sailboat. And I enjoyed that. Uh, very much. Can you uh, give me some impressions of your grandmother, Emma Young, um, from those years and from growing up? Yes, uh, I think she was a very uh, nice uh, woman. And she was the one who looked for the contacts with the family. Uh -huh. uh, grandfather normally hadn't too much time uh, to uh, to look for these contacts, but uh, he had a wife who did that uh, for him. So I, I loved her very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I admire her today uh, very much because I think she had a very hard life on his side. But as a child and as a young man, I, she never let me feel it that she had such a hard life. Mm -hmm. What do you think made her life so hard, being the wife of C.G. Young? 
Well, it's always hard to be second, uh, let's say second man to somebody important. Mm -hmm. uh, but it uh, made it also hard for her that uh, uh, she was not the only woman in his, uh, in his life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this for a long time. Uh, as, a, as a child, I never knew that. I only knew it afterwards. Uh, but I think she had quite uh, some hard times with him. Mm -hmm. And he, he also wasn't very nice or always with her. I think he, he loved her, but uh, he could grow angry very much uh, at times also with other people, not only with her. Mm -hmm. But she su supported all this in, a, in an admirable way. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are stories about uh, his... Uh his temper, his capacity to blow uh, in yes, anger, yes. and uh, that one can imagine that that could be difficult in the family. Mm -hmm. Did you know, did you have any acquaintance with uh, Tony Wolf? His well, uh, at the time I lived in Kuznacht uh, with grandfather, I saw her. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was very often there, and I, I remember walking grandfather and her up and down in the garden uh, at Kuznacht. Uh, I I always uh, thought about, uh, of, yes, thought about her as uh, a more or less crazy woman, uh, as a patient of him. I didn't like her. I laughed a bit about her. I didn't know at all that there was more uh, than a doctor and patient relation mm -hmm. between the two. Mm -hmm. That came later, that knowledge. That knowledge came only, I, I don't know, uh, not so much ago, perhaps since 10 years or so, I know mm -hmm. that. I always uh, knew that uh, grandfather who liked so much uh, material things as earth and good eating and nature and so on. I always suspected that, that he al also must have had some feeling for beautiful women and so on. <laughs> uh, but it's only much later on that I knew that, that he really had this, uh, these feelings. Mm -hmm. Did you find, was she a beautiful woman in any way? Would, uh, she not impression? for me. Not for you. No. Mm -hmm. She was an old, an old lady for me. <laughs> 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 yeah. In your experience uh, now, uh, do you think that that's an unusual thing for uh, a man of his um, genius to to have more than one wife, so to speak? I mean. In, in Europe, do you think there's any, in the context of a European life, is that unusual? Well, I, I wouldn't That's say that it's absolutely un, unusual. I don't agree mm -hmm. with that style of life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I must admit that perhaps he would not have been able to, to uh, do his work as he has done it if he had not these uh, psy psychical problems uh, himself, which, uh, which came from having several uh, women, if you want to say so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was important for him, for his own de development. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, I, I wouldn't agree with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it your impression that this may have caused difficulties for the children, for p your mother or for other uh, direct children of Yes, young? Yes, mm -hmm. I think it caused uh, uh, some difficulties to them. And uh, s still now, uh, it is difficult to talk with my mother about these problems. 
I wonder if that may not be one of the reasons uh, the children of your grandfather the, um, don't want to speak to us in interviews, that, that in a way they're still working on some of these things that they inherit as problems. Mm. Uh, it's quite the possible. It's quite possible that this is one of the reasons, but mm -hmm. I don't really know mm -hmm. it. I, I just can imagine. Is it? Also, there might be a certain uh, uh, re reluctance to have uh, to see that their father uh, is publicly known and so on. Uh, perhaps the the own father is is kind of a of a private owner. Has to be in a private ownership, if you want to say so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were there people often coming to visit? I mean, there were patients. I gather that patients came often. That was part of the daily life. Mm -hmm. Were you aware that, I mean, were there other people coming to visit and uh, famous people yes. coming? And uh, I, I don't remember of uh, visits of famous people uh -huh. because when I lived with him, I was too small to, to distinguish to between famous and, and <laughs> other people. I, I know that he had, uh, pretty often that he had guests, mm -hmm. and that they had some long discussions in the evenings with, uh, with his guests. Mm -hmm. mm. How do you relate to your own children about their great-grandfather? Are they, uh, I mean, your children are how old now? Uh, the boy is uh, 17 and the girl is four, 13 now. Mm -hmm. uh, Do they hear well, about him in school? They uh, hear from time to time a bit about him and they are also ask me not naturally about him. And the boy is, is interested in him. Mm -hmm. And he's even thinking himself now of becoming a psychologist. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he will not do it, but it's just a, <laughs> a time he has now. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl is not very much interested. Mm -hmm. She's perhaps also too, too young. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that Jung was a dominant personality in a way? I mean, in the family sure. life. Sure, sure, he was very, very dominant. Mm -hmm. Did that um. cause problems in finding in people, the younger people, finding their own identity, or 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 was he helpful in that regard? To it might have to be. Uh, difficult for his children, mm -hmm. uh, but for my generation, uh, generation of his grandchildren, I, I think he was al already too far away mm -hmm. to to be in the way uh, for the own de development, and also too far away to to de to develop his uh, his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. It is always difficult for somebody to have a, a very important father. But if, the, if your grandfather is important, it's not so much of a problem. Mm -hmm. Do you think it meant anything uh, unique to be born into a family of a, of a depth psychologist like Jung? I mean, did it influence the family life in terms of orientation to dreams or the way uh, some of the problems in adolescence might be mm -hmm. related to? Was there more awareness? Uh, do you feel that your parents had more awareness than other parents were more helpful because of the mm -hmm. work of your grandfather? No. Well, I, I think uh, I had a a quite a normal education, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I, 
I think I, I'm quite a normal, <laughs> normal man. Uh, but uh, already as a relatively small child, I had contacts to psychology because uh, at table and in family, the problems were very much looked at from a psychological point of view. So uh, that I think already at the age of seven, uh, I heard the word complex also. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I couldn't imagine much what it was a complex, but uh, I grew older with, with this word and the words extrovert and introvert mm -hmm. uh, were very uh, used very much used in the family, and uh, I learned these words and their meaning, uh, like, like the meaning of any other words. So I had always, also a certain, even already as a child, a, a certain feeling or knowledge also about typology. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that not all people are, are the same, Mm. Uh, that, 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 that there exists uh, several types. I, I didn't know at that time uh, that it was the typology of my grandfather, oh, uh, what see. he created, but uh, it was something, something that I just knew, uh, as, you knew that, uh, as you know, that two and two uh, make four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the way um, um, his work is uh, developing after his death, the future of, of his work. Well, uh, I'm not so very happy about uh, development. I have the impression that people are making out of Jung too much uh, a prophet or, or even a god instead of seeing him as a scientist who who just did his research work uh, and I fear a bit that Jungians are doing less real uh, research work than they are just uh, basing on what Jung said and what Jung found out. And so I, I have the impression that uh, there develops a certain Jungianism, if you might say so, uh, which is relatively near to a re religion mm -hmm. instead uh, of a science. By the way, I see that also in other psychological uh, movements. There are Freudians, there are Jungians, there are Adlerians, mm -hmm. there, are, there are psychodramatists and, and so on. And every type of psychology uh, seems to me to be, to be a bit too closed within its own uh, French or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is more believing in psychology than there is real uh, research or research-based knowledge. Mm -hmm. What do you think he, he, Jung himself, would think of this? Uh, he would certainly disagree. Mm -hmm. That was uh, one of the points uh, why he got out, uh, why he got uh, away from Freud. Jung found out by re his research work new things which Freud couldn't accept and which uh, didn't uh, 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 which, uh, which didn't ma match to, to the Freudian uh, uh, the theories. And so Freud wanted to stop Jung to publish uh, anything about uh, about it, 
and Jung just couldn't stop it and said, well, when I find out something, uh, I, I have to say it and to publish the truth, even if it's a bit against what the great master uh, says. Mm. And I, say, I think uh, Jung was always against being a Jungian. It's like, uh, as in, uh, in another science like physics, we don't have uh, today uh, uh, Newtonians and Einsteinians and, uh, and Bornians and so on, uh, but you have just physics, phys physicists, or physicists. physicists yes. uh, who do their research work. And I hope that psychology will, uh, after a certain time also, uh, come to be a, a science like another one. But for the time being, I think it's too much of a religion. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm sure, would also be the, the, the impression of, uh, of Jung himself. He seemed to be aware of the danger. Um, he didn't really agree with the founding of a training institute, mm -hmm. uh, as I have have found in the in the oh, records. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he he opposed it for a long time. I I didn't know that. Yeah, and no. uh, finally at the end, he there was so much pressure. He said okay, but he never went there. Mm -hmm. uh, he never lectured at the institute was mm. always at the club mm -hmm. and uh, so he seemed always to take a kind of negative view toward forming a training mm. institute in his name. Um, mm. I think there is a certain danger in, in training people just in one kind of psychology. Uh, Dr. Bauman, one of the things that continues to uh, come up for people associated with Jung and his work in the United States um, is a criticism that Jung was uh, anti-Semitic or that he was too sympathetic with the National Socialist Party in Germany, especially in the early years before um, the war broke out. And I wonder if this comes up in your own experience as a member of the Jung family. Do you do people ask you about it, or do they assume things that are not true? Yes, uh, from time to time it happens uh, that people tell me that Jung was too much sympathetic with National Socialism, and it makes me always uh, very angry because uh, it is just impossible if you look at the work uh, which uh, he has done why it comes that uh, he's associated with uh, National Socialism, uh, I cannot uh, know, but I can perhaps imagine uh, Freud was a Jew and Jung was not. And they had differences, uh, the two. So there might be that from that side, uh, people uh, thought that he might be an anti-Semitist. Uh, Jung also, in his psychology uh, of the collective unconscious, uh, saw that there are certain racial differences between people. There are Jews, there are Negroes, and so on. Uh, and But to see these differences must not mean that you disapprove of other races. Mm -hmm. And uh, m it might be uh, that this was also uh, uh, a reason why people thought he might be an uh, anti-Semitist, because he just saw that there are p differences be between men, and I think differences you can't deny. You can't deny that, that, uh, that our skin is white and other people's skin is yellow or, or, or 
brown or dark uh, uh, and so on. Uh, this is never, never uh, uh, an evaluation, but it's just a showing of the differences, which I think is wholly legitimate. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's absolutely crazy to think something like that, uh, because it doesn't go along with his psychological work. It is, a, is it is a contradiction, uh, national socialism, to to what he found out about human soul. Uh, so that I cannot imagine how anybody who is really thinking uh, can believe things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell me anything about Jung's relationship to money? For example. Uh, I remember reading in an English-speaking seminar that uh, the U.S. Uh, had just gone off the gold standard, and Jung was furious about this. Uh, can you say anything about how he related to money, and were there any psychological uh, implications of, of this relationship? Well, uh, I didn't know about that uh, you, what you just told me. Uh, about him being f furious uh, by the United States going away from the gold standard. Naturally, he, he was right, uh, as we see today. Uh, uh, well, I didn't have much uh, experience, uh, or don't have much experience on, with him about money. Money was never a thing we talked about mm -hmm. in, in family. I, just from small things, uh, I know that uh, he didn't like to spend much money uh, for, perhaps if it was not for himself, because uh, he had a relatively good life, he had a, a big house in Kuznacht, he had his tower in Bollingen, already in the 30s, when I was a small child, they had two cars, they had at least two sailboats, uh, they had a lot of employees in the house and the guard and so on. Uh, but later, if you wanted something from him which might cost money, he, he didn't like to, to agree. <laughs> uh, mm. It might be that he had a, a bit of special uh, attitude versus money, because all these expensive things he had around him uh, must have come from the money for which his wife uh, brought into the family. I cannot imagine that is, that is his work. His work as a psychologist brought so much uh, money, whereas uh, my grandmother was the daughter of an industrialist of Schaffhausen, and I think she was pretty rich. Mm -hmm. Now, in a family where the wife brings the money, there is always certain psychological problem for, for the husband. Mm -hmm. uh, because from old times, it is usual that the husband uh, brings the money uh, into the family, that he works uh, for, for earning the living of the family. So I, it is possible that there was such a problem in, in between my, my grandfather and grandmother. Mm -hmm. But I don't know it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I had never special experience with him about money or so. Mm -hmm. Do, when we ask you for the uh, interview on film, did you have any 
conflicts or doubts about talking to us? Uh, and do, what do you think he would have thought of this? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's very difficult to say. What he would have uh, thought. Uh, I had a certain conflict because I know that uh, quite a lot of members of our family are against these interviews. On the other hand, I, I have thought, well, if there are people who, who want to have these interviews, uh, this does not hurt to anybody. It just might, it might help. Dr. Bauman, can you give me a definition of uh, what a private bank is? Yes. A uh, private bank is a bank uh, headed by unlimited partners. Uh, the partners, the heads of the bank, are personally responsible, liable for all the debts of the bank. The, uh, an incorporated bank, on the other hand, uh, the people leading an incorporated bank will not be personally responsible for uh, financial engagements. Uh -huh. This is the legal, uh, the legal side. The legal, the legal form of private banks is the partnership. Uh, from the business side, uh, at least in Switzerland, Private banks are more or less specialized, spe specialized in, uh, in brokerage and uh, investment advice, portfolio management business. Mm -hmm. um, well, I can see a parallel myself in this form of, of doing business uh, in terms of Jung's emphasis on individual responsibility. I can see that, that there's... Um, perhaps a connection to the way he um, looked at uh, the individual relationship to the group uh, and to uh, events in one's life. I don't know that you've ever made that connection yourself, but I can see that he might have liked the idea mm -hmm. of a private bank uh, himself. What do you think? Well, well I, <laughs> I never came on this idea my, by myself, but I, I must admit uh, that the thinking uh, of Jung matches per perhaps a bit with the idea of, of privately responsible bankers. Uh, but he certainly uh, never thought about banks very much. <laughs> <laughs> he had other things to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you um, expand a little bit on something you told me about earlier, that um, there was... Um, um, an effect during the war of this bank secrecy law, um, it, it, it had a helpful effect for Jewish people during the war. Can you tell about that? Oh, oh sure. Uh, the, uh, the banking secret, which uh, is an old institution, uh, was first uh, written down in a law in Switzerland in 1936 in the Swiss banking law. And the time why it was made then uh, was probably because of the national socialism, which uh, uh, was then very mighty in, in Germany. Uh, there were, was quite some refugee money in Switzerland uh, from Jewish, and and other people in Germany who were not liked by the by the government, and uh, these monies could be protected more or less from German authorities because of the banking secret. Uh, German authorities tried to put hand on uh, on assets belonging to people in concentration camps, to Jews, uh, and so on. And the banking secret helped to, uh, to protect this money. 
it didn't work every time, but uh, it it worked uh, in a reasonable uh, number of, of cases. Hmm. I, I know of cases where uh, uh, people, Jewish people in concentration camps, were forced to uh, write the power of attorney in uh, in favor of a government employee, a German government employee. Then these uh, government people came to Switzerland and tried to withdraw the assets uh, with this power of attorney. But the uh, Swiss bankers were prepared uh, to that and tried uh, to find out if these were real powers of attorney of the, if, or if they were only forced. Sometimes they asked additional proof. They wanted to have a phone call from the client or something like that. So in many cases they didn't give, uh, give the, the assets into the hands of these government uh, mm -hmm. people. But uh, I must admit that from time to time also it arrived. Uh, that the German government could uh, put hands on mm -hmm. those assets. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the banking secret uh, has a has a big, uh, how can I say that, a function or, a, yeah, in order to help uh, political refugees and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it enhances freedom of the individual. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, sure. It's, it's part of freedom. It's part of our Swiss thinking about freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Naturally, you, you never can have absolute freedom, so banking secret neither is absolute. Mm -hmm. Banking secret never will protect any uh, criminal offense, uh, criminal in Swiss terms of the word criminal, so uh, never a, a robber or a thief or a murderer or so will be protected. In these cases, the banking secret is naturally broken. Mm -hmm. And important if it concerns a, a Swiss national or a foreigner, it's just the same. Whoever is involved as a client yes, is protected yes. under this law. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But if the client is a criminal, he's not protected. Mm -hmm. mm. Can you say anything about the um, influence that your grandfather's work may have had on you uh, in terms of your own religious attitudes? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I, I must admit that I had very much difficulties uh, to, to, to have access to, uh, to our Protestant religious uh, thinking. The, to think that there is an almighty God uh, in the world who is only a very good God uh, was something very... Uh, unbelievable to me, because all this unhappiness in the world wouldn't be possible if God was really almighty and if he was only good. And uh, after having read the book of Jung, uh, Answer to Job, uh, I saw, I had a totally different uh, access to religion and to God. I think the picture of God he has is, is really not a bad one and it's uh, at least it is a possible uh, God whereas the traditional God for me is an un impossible personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's not important for me anymore like for Jung, to know if there really is a God uh, in the skies or so, uh, 
but it's important to know uh, that there are marks in, in man's soul, uh, marks of, of God, uh, the archetype, if you want. So, uh, the image the, of God. The image of God is part of our soul, and this is a very powerful image. And if there is somebody who has made this image, it's not so much important than the fact that it, this image is real and is also can be proved, this image. Mm -hmm. Whereas the transcendental God can never be proved, even if the theologists uh, try to prove it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So it has made a, uh, it possible for you, in a way, to come to terms with religion and to yes. and to make a relationship to God in this way, in, in this particular sure. way. Sure, yes. Mm -hmm. I must admit that I have adapted more or less Jung's own uh, views on mm -hmm. uh, on God. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I, I have some uh, difficulties to to get along with theologists because they uh, are not very eager to admit that God has also his bad sides, mm -hmm. and not only good ones. Mm -hmm. But just the, the, the history of, uh, of Job proves how bad our God can be also. Mm 